Okay, so um, uh, with regard to our um, uh, discipleship and small groups ministry, uh, we looked at uh, last class, I think we stopped uh, at um, about a cell meeting and also, um, you know, ministering to cell members between the meetings, right? That's what we said. That's what we um, stopped with. Um, let me just share the screen and we'll go into um, what we can look at today. Okay, so today um, we're going to look at, uh, you know, uh, as we continue with our topic about small groups ministry. Now, um, just wanted to uh, share that uh, even before we start, right, that so this um, small group ministry is very, very uh, invaluable. Um, it's in the sense it's of great value because um, a lot of uh, a lot of big things, you know, a lot of uh, uh, amazing, some amazing big things happen in a small group setting, small group setting, right? In, in the ministry, which happens in a small group setting, it could be uh, even in a one-on-one -on -one setting, or even in a, you know a, a setting where um, we uh, minister to people in a in a small group. It could be in a home. But we see that um, you know destinies are changed, like lives are changed. Uh, people discover their calling purpose uh, because there is much more clarity, right? They they receive clarity about their own lives, and there is also hand holding in the sense you know you are there, other believers are there to to be with, to lend a helping hand, right? To help a person grow spiritually to help them navigate some of the challenges, some of the difficulties that they might be facing, right? So, so all this really helps the person to, rather than, you know, figuring out things on their own, um, you know, without anyone to help them, without anyone to, you know, properly guide them, you know, a lot of people actually fall by the wayside, in a sense, you know, they fall, um, you know, because of uh, a lack of this kind of, uh, lack of discipleship. Right, um, so lack or lack of mentorship, lack of, lack of discipleship. A lot of people really get discouraged and uh, and stop stop really following the Lord or stop pursuing the, the plans and purposes of God. Um, but so this, even if it, even though it looks like a very simple thing, uh, a lot of significant changes can happen in a small group setting. A lot of significant uh, changes which can mark a person. Uh, throughout their you know entire life right and a lot of uh, edification uh, brought in and a lot of um, uh, yeah, a, a lot of you know kind of uh, even refining work renewing work refining work brought in by the uh, by ministering to people in in small groups so in in a small group setting right so just wanted to reiterate the importance of that so today, let's look at, uh, you know, topic seven, page 20, which talks about how we can look at our cell group as a ministry team, right? So, so far, we've been looking at, okay, how to have a cell group meeting, how to have an effective meeting, how to be a good leader, and what to do as a cell group leader, what to do um, in between meetings, right? How to minister to the cell group, how to, so we looked at all that. So, so today, let's look at, um, you know, for us to look at our cell group as a ministry team, you know, it's a, it's rather than you know looking at the cell group as okay, I have to prepare something and share, which we're anyway not doing, right? We are facilitating, uh, we are uh, enabling, empowering the people to grow, right? Uh, helping people to grow. So that is what we are doing in a, in a cell, as cell, as cell leaders uh, in this particular model, of course, right? So to look at our cell group as a ministry team. So what does that mean? That, mean that, that means that um, each member in the cell group is a minister, right? Each member in the, to look at each member in the cell group as someone who is built or trained for ministry. And to see yourself or oneself as a cell leader who's going to be leading the team to minister to, to uh, minister in various ways, right? 
however the Lord would lead uh, in evangelism, in outreach, in maybe in specific ways right, to minister. Right? So, so one of the first things that we can do is to delegate responsibility, give responsibility to the cell members, like the members who, who are part of the meeting, who come regularly, give them uh, responsibility. What kind of responsibility? Well, to meet with visitors, right, who come, uh, new, newcomers who are coming, whatever, you know, you as a cell group leader, uh, we're doing, uh, maybe talking to people during the week and making them feel at home, welcoming them, etc. You know, give some of those responsibilities to uh, uh, delegate some of these responsibilities to others so that, uh, you know, they, they have an opportunity to do this. They have an opportunity to, to grow. Okay. So these are some things that following up with people, you know, how are you doing? Uh, you know, how are you doing spiritually? How are things, uh, how are things at home? Um, and those kind of conversations that uh, each of them can have. And particularly, you know, if you see someone with leadership potential, you know, they have a heart to care for people, then definitely, you know, this kind of an opportunity which will enable them to grow further in that, right? So uh, give them opportunities, uh, delegate the responsibility, okay? Uh, at the same time, you, uh, you know, as a leader, you, you keep in touch, right, with them and to see if everything's going okay, right? The second thing would be strategic relational evangelism, okay? So what can we do? You know, have these are some ideas. These are some thoughts, right? So uh, have the cell group members create a list of their family members who are not saved. Right? Uh, they could be uh, people who are friends, family. Maybe it could be even uh, neighbors. It could be in the in their immediate neighborhood. Maybe colleagues. Uh, maybe people whom who are they are studying with. You know, fellow students. Uh, make a list, right? And uh, each cell member can pray for them for this list during the week, right? During the, and also at the cell group meeting. And uh, so that, uh, what are some things that you can pray for? Okay, pray for them that their hearts will be open to receive the gospel. Pray that uh, uh, for opportune time, for uh, that God would orchestrate the moment, that God would orchestrate the circumstances and provide a divine appointment uh, so that the gospel can be shared and so on. You know? So, um, so this can be uh, this can be something that the whole cell group prays for during the week, and also you know uh, catches up during the cell group meeting to find out okay what happened, you know, did anything happen? Okay. So the other thing, third thing, is to follow up of the newcomers to the church. Okay, so we said, okay, follow up with visitors, follow up with regular people on the life group meeting or cell group meeting. Now, following up with uh, newcomers in the church, you know, in the sense, now that we know that the cell group is very integral part of the church, of the local church, right? It is a ministry of the local church. It's, uh, it's a discipleship, a model, discipleship tool of the local church, so local church. So it's not disconnected from the local church. It should not be disconnected from the vision, from the leadership, um, you know, from the uh, uh, anointing, everything that happens in the local church, the cell group should receive from uh, and, and not dis be disconnected. Okay. So uh, in that sense, now the cell group leaders or cell group members are also part of the local church, right? So they are going there for Sunday services, they are part of the worship services, they are part of whatever's happening in, in church in the bigger setting. So then each cell group member can uh, follow up or visit or talk to newcomers, like make them feel welcome. Now the church might have its own its own programs or it, it might, might have its own, uh, let's say, um, uh, welcome team or, uh, you know, a, a visitor's welcome team or a member care team or a connect team, you know, whatever name you call it. But basically, these are people who are connecting with the, the, the first time visitors, right? connecting with other people in the church and uh, making them feel welcome, 
helping them find their place in the church, um, getting them to, you know, introducing them to other people, other members of the church and so on. So this is, the church might have a formal team doing that. But in addition to that, you know, what will really help is if every cell group member, you know, makes it their responsibility to meet with a newcomer in church. You know, many, many times, um, uh, you know, our, the tendency for us is to meet with people who, who we know, like whom we have not met during the week. And uh, maybe our friends, maybe, you know, we are meeting them only on Sunday morning, right? We're meeting them maybe that week. So um, the tendency, natural tendency is to go towards them, say hello, find out how they're doing because they are, you know, familiar faces, right? Um, but, you know, as a cell group leader, if we can uh, share with our cell members to go and meet every Sunday, meet with at least one new person who might be coming to church or one unknown person to them, right, who might be coming to church and and uh, find out and, uh, and follow up with them. And also, uh, you know, maybe there are new believers, you know, maybe there are people who have made decisions uh, in that church service to follow, follow Jesus or maybe committed their lives or recommitted their lives too. So just to meet with them, to talk to them, and if possible, find out if they are, you know, if they can be part of the life group, right? So, uh, so what happens is more and more people are connected, get connected to the life group, get discipled, have fellowship one, with one another, and nobody feels really left out. Right? Nobody feels that, hey, I'm coming to this church and I'm going back, and uh, you know this happens in big churches, right? When I say big churches, it, it could be even you know a church of uh, hundred people, right? A church of hundred people, um, you know. I think anything more than fifty, right? If you if you see, uh, you know, it, there are chances that people would come and go without meeting others. Right? If it's fifty, yes, they would get to um, meet others, and so so the the thing is, uh, it's not for the sake of just meeting. Or sake of just fellowship, but also for the for the uh, for the important purpose of being disciple. Okay, so um, so the thing is to to find out, uh, follow up. Okay, so we are what are we looking at? We're looking at how our cell group can be a ministry team. So the cell group can be a ministry team to follow up with newcomers to in our own cell group. The cell group cell group can be a ministry team to reach out in terms of evangelism pray for people specifically uh, known to us right it's not we're not reaching out to uh, and that can also happen but you know people known to us in our friend circle in our work circle uh, uh, in our student circle who are they uh, who are the people who need to know jesus right who need to um, uh, understand and fall i mean and receive the love of the lord okay so then since we are part of the bigger body of Christ, to follow up with the newcomers, follow up with members, follow up with people who make a new decision uh, to follow Christ, and so on, right? Okay, then, uh, as a ministry team, the cell group can also do small projects. You know, we can call them seed projects. We can call them, you know, uh, uh, you know, different names. But these are small uh, projects, meaning. It can be uh, an outreach. It can be something, a community project, something that the cell group does together to impact uh, people around them. Okay, now it's it's no more individuals, but together as a team. Right? What can they do? Can they visit some place to be of encouragement? Maybe senior citizens, elderly people. Can they visit some place? Um, you know, it's we're talking not only about Christmas time. You know, Christmas time is when everybody does that, but regularly. You know, maybe once in two months, once in three months. Can can the uh, you know what is it? What is the burden that the that the Lord is putting in their hearts right, as a cell group? Uh, maybe they they want to take up something, uh, take up uh, you know some some form of responsibility in a nearby community and they want to do that maybe um, even a responsibility like you know maybe cleaning up uh, a neighborhood and, and things like that right so uh, you know, which which you know which may look like um, unspiritual but then you're making an impact right you're creating an impact you're making an impact you're uh, you know doing something for the community you know which are people and you're showing through that action that you love 
and uh, and when you know that sets us up for you know even further uh, further opportunities for meaningful conversations about the gospel, right? So you know maybe uh, some things like that, right? And also outreach, especially evangelistic events and outreaches. Um, you can you know the cell group can organize minister so what happens is you know like when let's say the church is organizing something okay the local church is organizing something some people will get be part of it some people most people you know may just come attend go they may not be involved in planning they may not be involved in executing that plan right but in a cell group you know because it's a handful of people everyone gets to do something right in planning in executing in uh, you know in leading right so uh, in ministering so all this happens so so everyone grows right uh, everyone grows because they are they are min- either ministering or you know, you know they're doing things or they're planning and they're engaged you know uh, with the vision of the church so everyone gets to grow they get to use their gifts they get to use their you know special abilities which god has given them they get to use their spiritual gifts right and so with the so you know like paul says do not neglect the gift of god which is in you right um god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind so um so to stir up that gift okay so as a uh, cell group you're doing that you know giving opportunities to stir up the gift for the people right uh, and of course very important is uh, the involvement in Sunday service or Sunday celebration, right? So everybody's coming together. They are not disengaged or they're not distanced from the service that happens on Sundays. Right? That's, so that's uh, the thing. So um, they are worshiping together corporately as a church, as a body, as a family. Okay. Right. Okay, so let's look at um, what are some what are some of the pitfalls to avoid or mistakes to avoid. You know, it could be uh, it now. This is from the perspective of a cell group for a pers- uh, for a cell group leader. Okay, so as a cell group leader, uh, what are some mistakes to avoid? Right. Um, so let's look at a few of them. Okay. Um, so just to say that each are very each you know each point which is listed here is important right so uh, let's look at a few okay um avoiding shortcuts you know to build a successful cell group now it's it it's a process it is uh, it is going to take time okay so what does it involve it involves getting to know people it involves people getting to know you as a cell group uh, as a cell leader and uh, people getting to know each other you know some might not feel comfortable they might leave okay maybe they they you know they're not comfortable in in, a, in this kind of a group maybe they'll be comfortable in some other life, cell group that's fine you know, just encourage them uh, let them be part of uh, a cell group um so it's going to take time we need to understand that you know and not get discouraged you know uh, maybe in the cell group there are only three people four people who are there and the others are well they're not regular they're not uh, you know they're not showing up uh, just continue right uh, don't stop continue persist and see um, you know whom the lord will connect and see whom you can you know uh, in church who you can connect who are the people in your area and don't give up Right. Maybe the Lord is working something in you and changing things in you, building strength in you to be a better leader. Right. So don't give up. Uh, so there are no short routes, you know, shortcuts to uh, building a successful cell cell group. Right. Um, the second thing is, you know, when you get to know about other cell groups and other cell leaders and you know how well they are flourishing and thriving, then when we compare ourselves right to others then there is a tendency to compete okay i want to be like that i mean it, it's good and healthy thing to learn from successful you know cell leaders others who are doing it well and to learn right to learn it's a healthy thing to learn that and say okay uh, maybe you know these are some things that i'm not doing 
and I need to do it well. Or oh, these are some things that um, uh, I these are some things to stop. Right. Uh, what I need to do is I need to stop doing this because it's not really helping. And I see, you know, right, this working in the other cell group. So, so that's fine. Right, but to compete and say, oh, "I want to be better than this," I want to be, be better than them, you know, that is wrong. Right, that's a work of the flesh. So, you know, it's like selfish ambition. Right, so, so we should not go there. We should not go into, you know, that go follow that path. Right, so avoid that. Avoid that comparison. Avoid that competitiveness. Um, just, you know, be content in you know what you're doing, and continue to do without getting discouraged okay um avoid careless appointing of leadership okay within the cell group okay let's say you see people and then they are saying that hey, i really want to be a cell group leader i want to get trained what is the motive right what is the motive is it because they want to promote themselves they want to you know they want to uh, you know, whatever their agenda is, you know, sometimes we had that challenge, right? Like people uh, are into multi-level marketing, multi-level marketing, you know, like they are selling some products like Amway or, uh, you know, uh, uh, other, other stuff. And it's a multi-level marketing where network marketing, right? So they get to know people, they sign up and then, you know, the whole thing. And then the, the whole, the objective is that, Okay, um, you sell the products, you sell the whole range of products, you get, you, you know, the more people you network with, you get to, so, so the thing is to find out, you know, is the person who wants to be a, who wants to be a cell group leader, is that the agenda, you know, do they want to be a cell group leader so that they can be successful in their business, uh, so, so they are treating every cell group member like a business contact, right, uh, a business connection, with who, who can actually further their business is that the motive right so we need to be discerning as cell group leaders to and not appoint people with wrong motives right people who genuinely care uh, about the ministry people who are or ministry in the sense who, who have a genuine heart for people people who genuinely are connected and they are committed to the body of christ you know to the local body of Christ, right? Um, to the, whatever the local church that you're part of. So, uh, so don't compromise on that. Right? Don't let down the standard for appointing cell group leaders. Right? Then the other thing is the fourth thing that we need to avoid is um, avoid the cell group meetings from becoming a mini church service. Okay. Now, what do we mean by that when we say, you know, in a church service, okay, there is there's someone you know, doing it, there's somebody leading worship, there's somebody who is uh, you know, sharing the word, there's somebody who's, you know, uh, and, and that's, you know, that that is how it is. It's not two ways, right? It is mostly one way, right? The word is being shared and, and everybody well, receives it and there is a place for that. It's 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 a good thing. It is uh, and it is what we need to do, uh, especially when when a group comes together like that. That there is, you know, receiving. There is an impartation we are, we are, you know, uh, of learning and so on. So we need to do that, right? But we need to avoid doing that, like bringing that search service into a cell group meeting. Now this is the this is specifically I'm talking about this model of cell group ministry. Okay, um, why? Now, if you ask the question, why? Why can't I just have preaching and teaching? Well, the answer is this. You know, this is not an evangelistic meeting. It is not a, like a big crusade meeting. It is not a Sunday service where there is preaching and prayer and people go, right? It is not that. It is a time of a discipling. It is a place and it is a space where people are learning to follow the Lord Jesus. People are being groomed to become disciples, leaders, ministers, leaders, right? So we are intentionally enabling people to be 
followers of the Lord, a better followers of the Lord, a closer followers of the Lord Jesus, uh, who will discover their plan and purpose, discover their gifts, get trained, get equipped to use their gifts for the work of ministry, right? So they be, be they are ministers and uh, they are becoming leaders as well, who will raise up other leaders, right? So, uh, so that is something that we are doing. So we are intentional about now the so therefore we cannot allow a life group or a cell group meeting to become a mini church uh, service kind of a setting okay so this is not to say that church service um, setting is bad but it is not the right thing to happen in a cell group meeting where the focus uh, the intention is discipleship Right, so it's more for discussion. It's more for asking questions and uh, and and so on. So there is a lot of interaction. The time is spent on interaction. The time is spent on, you know, getting the answers from the Word of God. The time is spent spent on, okay, applying the truth and uh, you know finding out, okay, why this did not work. You know, what were some of the challenges to learn, and and everything is word based. Right. Everything is based on scripture. The answers he, he, you know, people are giving, it needs to be based on scripture. Right? So, um, so that's uh, something right, that we need to uh, be mindful of. Okay? Uh, watch out for people pursuing personal agenda. Okay? So in the sense, uh, you know, just like what we said, you know, people, um, you know, they have their own idea, they have their own agenda, why they're coming for the uh, cell group meeting. It's not to it's 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 not uh, you know it's not to become a disciple it's not to be a better follower of the lord jesus it's it's not all that it's just another agenda you know something else now like people might come for various reasons but then ultimately they need to align themselves right they need to know that hey, this is what the cell group is about right this is why we are actually meeting it's uh, uh, you know that purpose uh, that vision needs to be made clear and over a period of time of course you know when we when we reiterate okay this is why we are meeting it's not for the food it's not for you know it's not for uh, everybody just having a great see those are all happening but this is the main thing you know everything else um is is it, it's it's on this on the periphery but the central thing the main thing is that uh, we are learning uh, to follow Jesus, we are being trained to be disciples. Okay, so personal agendas. Okay, I want to maybe somebody saying uh, I will get an opportunity to preach. I'll get an opportunity to you know uh, you know to minister every time, uh, to prophesy every time, to uh, you know whatever. You know that if I'm part of this group, if I'm ministering here, then I'll get invited to you know preach on a Sunday morning. Whatever be that, you know. So. If there is a personal agenda with people coming, so what happens? You know, if people come with that personal agenda, then once they know, well, this is why the life group meets. Uh, either, you know, they get aligned, right? They make that change internally and say, okay, you know, this is a good thing. This is good for me, and uh, let me do this. You know, all other things, you know, uh, I need to let go of. So people change, or they may they might not stay right? it's reality they might not say hey this looks like this is a place where i cannot you know come and put my talents on display you know it's it's, a, it's it looks like it's a place where uh, you know where i you know all this will not be encouraged so i don't want to come well you know the thing is this, you know, maybe there's some somebody said, okay, maybe I can start a church here. You know, all these people are there. I'll I'll slowly get them, uh, you know, to to be part of my church, right? Whatever. So the people realize that hey, that can't happen. So they might discontinue. Right? So that's fine. That's okay. But you avoid that. That you be discerning and you uh, avoid um, encouraging such. Uh, such things uh, or encouraging such people right okay okay what about people from other churches now this is a question you know which we get asked over and over again right so can people from other churches attend the life group well 
no it's 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 uh, it's like this right uh, especially in this cell group model what are we doing what are we discussing what are we learning okay so you, you need to go back to that what are we doing in this you know we're having a time of worship what is happening in this cell group we are whatever we have learned on sunday right whatever we have heard on sunday we are going further deeper in that okay but this is something that we heard on sunday that we it was preached on sunday so we're going deeper in that okay and uh, whatever was heard preached on sunday we are trying to apply that truth okay whatever we need clarification um, you know from the whatever was uh, uh, you know preached on sunday you know we're going to study that we're going to clarify that so so that is what is happening right so now if someone is from another church right uh, now that's the same thing is not going to happen why because they are part of another church and uh, they are listening to something else right which is good you know but it's not something that was preached in the in in the church that the life group is part of so they are part of some other church they're listening to some other message so now when as a life group when all the people are actually you know they've heard on sunday they are discussing on sunday's uh, message and thing then they are going to be out of place right they uh, either they are not able to contribute because they have not heard that they are not able they are not in sync with what is happening so you know so on a one off thing you know occasional occasionally visiting will will be okay but then you know over a period of time we see that that really doesn't help the person okay and still if the person we're not going to say okay you know uh, the best thing for that person would be to be part of a cell group which that church has which they are the church where they are going on a sunday and uh, you know receiving from on a sunday morning so it's a good thing to be part of that uh, body local body um and whichever cell group or a you know, small group meeting which is part of that uh, that will be beneficial for them rather than here rather than this and it's going to be uh, it's going to be difficult for them it's not going to be really useful for them in the long run they're going to feel left out okay well uh, some people say okay no this is not being taught in my church and i find that okay this is something that is really useful i i need to uh, you know the, be part of it and then you just say okay don't you know let your pastor know right that you're doing this or you know because it should not become a problem right sometimes it happens right okay this person is part of this church and they they're going for this other church's life group you know all kinds of problems so the best thing what we suggest is you know you be part of whatever is happening in that church um but you know if you are part of this local body local church then this is a discipleship program of this church so you know be part of it now of course um you know now things are changing in the sense you have uh, you know you have online church services and then so which means that people yeah you know are not physically in that place but they are in some other place you know some other part of the country some other part of some other part of the world uh, who are watching the online services and who might want to be connected during the week now we've had instances like that right uh, like people like even uh, part of the bible college who watch the in online service and then saying hey can i be part of this so we've connected a few people like that saying that okay uh, the life group the cell group is meeting online because of the pandemic and so on so well if you are interested and if you can manage the time difference right um sure you can do that but this is what is happening you know may make it very clear that this is what is happening and uh, and so you know that also um you know once they attend and once they see that okay this is what is going to be discussed in church uh, uh, in the life groups in the cell group meeting then um, then either they need to listen to the word you know being part of the online service so that's the key thing right um, so now that is online maybe they are 
you know, they are members of another church, but it will be really effective if they, you know, attend the service online or, or listen regularly to the messages online. Um, so that's the, uh, so that's the key thing. Okay. Then visiting speakers. Okay. So now let's say you have, um, somebody and you feel that okay they've they've really blessed your life you know as a uh you know when a person growing up you know, the lord uses many people to, to speak to us to to build us up and and you 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 feel that okay them uh you know one of one of them or maybe a group if they minister in the life group it'll be a blessing to the uh to the group okay if they minister in that cell group then okay so which means that you, you're not going to be you know, you're not going to be discussing, talking about Sunday service. Okay, this is a one-off thing, right? You're going to be uh, having a guest speaker or a visiting speaker. And maybe it's going to be, it may not be a discussion. It's just going to be someone sharing, ministering. Okay. Now, be careful, of course. You know, let it be someone whom you know, whom you trust, uh, uh, who will not damage what is happening, right? Uh, and all that. And have a discussion with the the leadership of the church, right? Maybe there is a cell pastor or cell group pastor, or maybe there is a, you know, someone who's in charge, overseeing, overseeing, sorry, the cell group ministry. Have a discussion, have a conversation with them. Ask them, you know, is it okay? You know, uh, and uh, maybe that person, uh, maybe, you know, the, the, the thing is to get permission there, right? Um, this It's always good. And, and maybe, you know, if they say, no, I don't think so, it's fine. You know, you can, you can have, you know, your own meeting or something. That's fine, but it's not what is it? It's not a cell group meeting. Right? A cell group meeting is different. So you can. I mean, you are of course, you know, free to have anyone invited to come to the to our house and have a meeting and so on. Right. So, so it's not a cell group meeting. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. Okay. Now, independent ministries again. You know, people who they're saying, you know, there's, I'm, we are from this ministry, we are from this particular thing, we are just um, you know, visiting, and can we uh, can we minister in your cell group? Can we talk? Can we minister? Uh, can we bring a message? Uh, be discerning, be careful, right? You know, because you don't know them, and uh, they are, you know, you don't know them, you don't know what they are, what they believe, and uh, what they are going to be sharing. Uh, and so on. So it's best not to entertain such requests, right? But if if you know them personally, if you uh, if you know that they are safe, again, have uh, discussed that with the uh, cell group uh, pastor. Okay, so so that the cell group pastor also knows, uh, also you know shares in that responsibility, and uh, you know go with that. Go with the wisdom and advice, uh, right? So rather than your own thing there, okay, get the permission, discuss. Okay. Um, now, in the cell group, next thing is this, you know, when we are ministering in the cell group, of course, the cell group is a wonderful place for developing the gifts. A like wonderful place for, uh, for a believer to practice the gifts of the Spirit. Whatever be uh, the gifts of the spirit, you know, maybe tongues and interpretation, maybe um, uh, you know, uh, uh, prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, um, and so on. So it's a wonderful place where we can learn from mistakes, where we can, you know, where we can, uh, you know, step out in faith. It's a safe place, right? And and also, you know, having. Uh, studied the prophetic and apostolic, you know, you know, what are the guidelines, right? So uh, everything has to be tested. It has to be based on the word of God. And, and you give, you're giving yourself permission and saying, okay, please test. You're telling the person and you're giving the other person also the responsibility to test the, you know, if it's a prophetic word to test and to either, you know, if it's not lining up with the word to either reject it or if it is lining up with the word to accept it. Right. So, so in the sense, so one has to be careful that um, uh, it is done in the right way. Okay. So, so when people are zealous, we need to put in that 
guideline and say okay this is how we will do it you know like some people might say okay this is what god is saying and they don't say it publicly but they're saying it privately um to another believer and and it's it's like this is what god told me this is what god spoke to me and it could be you know certain things like okay god wants you to move there or god wants you to marry this person or god wants you to take up this job you know specific things now uh and without uh, you know without that oversight uh, or without that guideline of okay test and see uh is it in is it in line is it in line with the word you know without that um guideline or maybe some kind of a you know a condemning word saying okay hey god showed me that uh, this is what you're doing and god is going to destroy this god is going to be uh, you were going to go into a season of whatever you know difficulty now you know this is not done publicly but this is done in private and so we need to avoid those things you know if it is done publicly the other person can actually correct the cell group leader can correct hey prophecy is is it's a, it brings in edification exhortation and comfort you know it's an edifying word yeah, even if it's a word of correction it 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 is redemptive in nature like how we see god's commandments it's redemptive in nature it's always to bring back the to the, the bring back the person to uh to redeem that person from destruction not and not to further push that person into dis- destruction and, and condemn right the cross is about redemption so um, there's always hope you know no matter how far the person has gone so uh so if a person in private gives this you know the group doesn't get to know the cell group leader doesn't get to know and maybe the per- it brings in fear into the person you know that person is fearful anxious because of that word and maybe that person is a new believer or you know all these kinds of damages can happen so while we definitely want to encourage right in the cell group there definitely needs to be encouragement to move in the gifts of the spirit but with these safety measures right so as a cell group leader uh put these things put these guidelines in place right so help them so uh help them so that the, the group does the right thing thrives you know even if there's a mistake there is always a um you know uh, instruction on how to overcome and how not to do it right okay so don't force newcomers the next thing don't force newcomers to become members of your cell you know we we can just invite people we can follow up with people but if they are not interested uh to be part of it it's we don't have to force and say hey this is a discipleship thing the church is saying you need to be part of it no you know let them be be part of any any cell group that they are comfortable with if they are not you know uh, that's that is fine just leave it right um you know as new leaders you know this is something that might happen or let's say you're a cell group leader you've been trained uh, by the church and you've been appointed as a cell group leader and you're conducting this cell group meetings okay now over a you know let's say you've been doing things okay for a month or a few months and suddenly you there is another person who gets connected to the cell group who is you know who's been is been more experienced like in the sense he's older this person is older this person person is more experienced uh, you know in, in maybe in ministry uh, maybe is uh, uh, you know is operating in the gifts and so on so as a cell group leader don't be intimidated by that in the sense uh, you know don't think okay I, this person knows more than me this person is more experienced than me is more gifted than me and uh, no don't don't be intimidated by that right intimidated in the sense you know don't be overwhelmed by that second thing is when we get overwhelmed or when we get intimidated by such things that we observe in another believer whom we are actually leading in the life group cell group what we do is we sometimes give that leadership to them you know the leadership that we have been given we try to you know we what we do is because we are overwhelmed by this person we try to hand over that leadership to them how do we do that in the sense okay you lead okay you only lead take care of it and uh, we take a you know back seat in that don't do that do not relinquish do not you know hand over the leadership 
of the group. You, know, you are a leader. It's for a purpose, right? Why the church has trained you, why the church has appointed you as a leader. So the church is encouraging you behind you 100%. So do not relinquish the leadership of that cell group of which you are a leader to another to another person right so this is very very important even though that person might be experienced uh, older etc and especially you know the facilitation of the group you know maybe you can give opportunities you know now today this person will uh, facilitate the discussions and uh, we can always do that but you do not you have to be secure okay as a cell group leader you know we have to be secure in our role in our identity uh, as you know as as child of god and uh, and not really uh, be overcome by these things what we observe in others okay okay we'll stop here and then we'll uh, we'll come back after the break <laughs> 